great memories. They were the first ones on the dance floor when we would bring them to family weddings. You were the first ones out there, weren't you? Yeah. Get the show started. As I recall, Sarah had gone up to James at a dance. She had known him for many years, maybe even since they were children. And she said, I need a boyfriend. Do you need a girlfriend? And that's how I think they started dating. <laughs> and um, it didn't take very long before they started talking about marriage. And I had, at that point in time, worked with people with intellectual disabilities for many years. And I had never worked with anyone who had gotten legally married. I had never even known a couple that had legally gotten married. And I wasn't entirely sure if it was possible. I took them out to dinner at Perkins and I asked them, I said, I'm going to take you out and ask you a lot of hard questions. And I said, I asked them a lot of things like, what happens if somebody's watching a movie that the other person doesn't want to watch? And who's going to be doing the dishes? And who's cooking? You know, and where are you guys going to live? And they had an answer to every question. But what really touched my heart was at the end of our dinner, James turned to me and said, before Sarah, I had a hole in my heart. And when, when Sarah came into my life, that hole was filled. I see her, her dad come up there and I said, that's my queen, come on up, my bride. I, be, I am super happy half of my wife. Thank you. At the time when we supported them through their marriage, it was still kind of a controversial idea that people with intellectual disabilities could get married. And I was even reprimanded by somebody close to them for even you know, thinking of that idea but I would say that I've never known two individuals who better understood um, the sacrament of marriage than those two did. Their wedding was probably one of the highlights of my life. I've never really seen such a beautiful love story. Thank you, my parents, and mom and dad, and, and my, um, my housemates and this, my hammer staff. When we were still providing services to Sarah through our in home department, I believe but we weren't serving James at all. And so they were actually, at the time, looking at splitting them up and having James, who you know, was gonna have increasing needs, uh, move to a different uh, place than Sarah. And so when we heard that story, it was you know, kind of, I think, piqued a lot of our interest, but it kind of tugged on our heartstrings a little bit to say, you know, I, I think we can do better than this. And, and that's about all we knew at the time. We made a commitment, I think, as a group and as, as families uh, that we would serve James and Sarah together as long as we possibly could and it would evolve and, and so that apartment really became kind of the, the blank slate. It was really remarkable to watch how she grew as his needs changed. She really took her responsibilities as a wife mm -hmm. and as, as a caregiver really seriously. She recognized the changes that were happening and she beautifully took those responsibilities on herself. I'll never forget the one day um, when James had a fall and she won't ever forget it because she reminds me of the date and Aww. that she came to the rescue and that she was his nurse. He was hospitalized and um, between transitional care and hospitalizations and we didn't know what the future looked like for him. Um, we wanted him badly to return home with Sarah, um, as we know that's what the both of them wanted. And we had to get creative as to how we were going to try to do that. But the county jumped in and made a decision that kept them from being able to continue to live together. And so it was at that point that we happened to have an opening at one of our, our homes, the home that Danielle and Tim are in charge of and so James moved to our Lee Avenue home. So now Sarah and James are no longer able to live together and I know that was devastating for every single one of us. We weren't just um, supporting James as he was dying but we had to coordinate an enormous number of people supporting the two of them. The way that was done was just remarkable. Um, the work your staff teams did was absolutely stunning. 
a gift that's bigger than any gift that, that there can be. So I just want to say thank you to this team because it takes a village to get a, a couple through something like this. Where do we see Jim? Where do we see Jim and hear Jim the most? In the sunshine. And, it, and it, it, I see the rain comes down. Mm -hmm. I see him in the clouds. And when it's snowing, I don't want like that word. <laughs> I see him right there in the snow. He likes Christmas in December. Now he is. We're talking about him right now. He can hear it. I don't want to hear my voice up there right now. I know it's kind of sad and hard not living together. I know I love you. I always love you. You always touch my heart, our spirit. <laughs>